Uh, this is Jim Forath for Real Deal. I'm sitting in a lovely uh, Soho bordering on Tribeca apartment with um, the top twins. Uh, Linda is in blue and Jules is the other one. And they are identical twins. They're from New Zealand. And they are quite extraordinary story because like in the 70s, here in the, in the US, we had a very strong and powerful women's music world, but very few women were able to break out of that to a, a larger audience. I think um, Ferrin was one because of the strength of her songwriting, and her yeah. promotion by heterosexual male rock critics really liked Ferrin's music because it reminded them of Dylan. But most of the other women never were able to cross over um, Alex Dopkin to some degree, but still, in U2, if I'm correct, um, very much reflect the kind of values and politics of the uh, women's uh, music community that was here in the United States in the 70s. And I want to know if back then, when you were in the military, uh, that you knew anything about the women's music uh, community that was international at the time. To, oh, yeah. to a point, we did. Yeah. You know, we were when we were young. We were, you know, we were listening to old wind up seventy eights when we grew up. So we didn't we didn't know anything about women's music when we were growing up in the things. But 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 later on, you know, as we got more and more political, you know, we we you know we had we had Ferrum's album in our collection, and I think we had um, here come the leaping lesbians. <laughs> um, so we we did have that. Chris that, Williamson. Yeah, Chris Williamson. Williamson. Spilling up and spilling up. Everyone knew that. <laughs> So, you know, we, we had an idea of that, but, you know, to us in New Zealand, they, we thought they were, you know, huge. they were they were huge to us because, you know, we were this tiny little country at the bottom of the earth and, and a couple of, you know, young country girls having a go at singing, but, yeah, they were big. When were you in the military? Uh, about, uh, <coughs> we were 17 years old. 17 years old when we did that. And, uh, and did you go... Were you always seen as sisters and twins, or did, were you seen as separate people when you went into the military? No, we were always recognised as twins. Yeah. If someone would see us, they'd, they'd, they'd go, oh, how's Linda? Or if they saw me by myself, you know, they go, where's your sister? Mm -hmm. People would be surprised if we weren't together to some degree. <coughs> that's, that's sort of a very, I think that's a, pe that's a people thing that they think about twins as a unit. And I suppose <coughs> in a lot of ways we are a bit of a unit. Why did you go in the military at 17? <laughs> it was a free trip to the South Island. <laughs> <laughs> we lived in the North Island of New Zealand and, and the, the training was in the South Island. And um, you know, we grew up on a dairy farm and, and we wanted to go and see the world. And the world to us at that point was the South Island. And so yeah, don't, don't leave home before you, you know, see your home, sometimes people would say. And we got a chance to um, just be, uh, it was, all the territorial service, and uh, we knew we could do it because we're pretty fit, you know, working on the farm. Um, uh, there's, two, there's two types of women that joined the army in New Zealand at that time, and one was to find a husband, and the other ones were doing it to prove something to themselves. It's a bit of an exercise, so I think that we were the second. Are there one of you trying to find a husband? No, no. <laughs> I think it was a, you know, we were trying to prove that we could get through it and do it. And Is it compulsory service in New Zealand? No. 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 So it was voluntary. Yeah. And we did six weeks of training and then stayed efficient for two years after that. We were signals operators. Oh. So we learned to um, we learned to <coughs> carry a gun, carry a radio. Um, and Things that you needed later on, you know, down the line. On when tour. You were, <laughs> when, you, when we were fighting the big fights, we had a, you know, things, a few things came in handy. Not, not the guns, but we, you know, we, we, had, we knew how to strategize and we knew yeah, how I think you can't put something down until you've had a go at it. Mm -hmm. Until you know what it is. Until you know what it or is. Or know the power of it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The reason I've sort of opened this interview with this odd question about the military is because you two were very involved in the counterculture, peace movement, uh, cultural kinds of protest in New Zealand and we're not used to thinking of military lassies, if I may, uh, of being so politically progressive. Now, am I layering something on New Zealand that's not true, or 
when did you come to consciousness? <laughs> we, look, we were political when we were in the army. <laughs> Some of our first political movements were actually in the army. We were, we were. Um, there was a parade through the streets of. Um, it's called the Blossom Festival in the South Island, and they were going to our, our our whole battalion was going to parade through the streets, and um, <laughs> there was only three or four women who were in that battalion. There were three hundred of us. And there were only three women. And we'd been issued with uh, what they call a battle dress outfit, which was a skirt and a shirt. And um, and they uh, had said at the they came out. Everyone was waiting and ready to go on the parade. And they said that the women weren't allowed to go on the parade because they their legs stood out because we didn't we weren't issued with trousers at that point. For we were issued with trousers, but not dress parade trousers. Right? So they said we weren't allowed to go. So we yes, we walked off parade. We, we dismissed we ourselves off. Of, the you know. three women dismissed themselves from the parade, and we got hauled over the coals because <laughs> you're not supposed to do that apparently in the army. Mm. But we just said it was terribly unfair. We'd fought in the you know bloody trenches like the boys had on our on our on our manoeuvres that were out there, and uh, we thought we needed to be acknowledged just like them. And in the end, they let us drive these jeeps into town. So the woman got to drive the jeeps with these mounted rifles on the back um, because we, and then we wouldn't be seen marching with the boys. I think they wanted that, you know, sort of that uniform look, but it was pretty intense and it was a sort of interesting moment. But I guess we were ready to challenge the authorities then. We stood up to things that we thought, you know, that we thought that's an injustice. Where did that come from, this kind of... Um, I think from mum. I think from mum, really, in lots of ways. She always instilled some fairness into us and I also think she also instilled this thing into us that made us want to stand up and say that you know that you know that it's she was looking for some fairness that's always what it seemed it had to be fair if it wasn't fair it wasn't right did you say fear? No, fear. It had to oh, be fear. justice. Looking just for justice. Yeah. Just fearless. fearless. Okay. You know, not fearless. Okay. Well, actually, we were fearless then. Yeah. But, but it had to be fear. It seemed to be, it's a word that New Zealanders use a lot. It's, you have to be fear. You, you know, you've got to share things. You've got to be, you know, you've got to be looking out for each other mm -hmm. and look out for the underdog, I suppose. And so I guess it was easier for us because there was two of us. If we did something, I, I knew the would back me up and she knew I'd back her up. So I think we're a bit of a force in the record and that's, that sense, there's always someone standing behind you. And that's hard in the political world because usually you're on your own. Did you have brothers and sisters? We've got an older brother. Um, 